play duets too? You do? Or I'm just suggesting something you don't really do. You'll start. All right. Thank you so much. Christmas. Wow, it's Christmas season. Whenever I think of uh, Christmas and being a pastor for these years, almost 30 now, uh, I think of when my kids were small, and uh, I'm sure all of you have either had kids in Sunday school classes or taught a Sunday school class with kids or something, it was always fun to hear what the kids had to say about Christmas. My kids always came up uh, with great stories. And I remember one year I heard a Christmas story that a kid told in a Sunday school class. The teacher had just told them about Mary, Joseph, the baby, going to Egypt. And uh, they're, they're running away from uh, what was happening in Bethlehem, you know, all the babies being killed and stuff like that. And they, uh, they had a flight to Egypt. And there, this little boy heard the story, and he drew a picture. And the teacher saw the picture, and the picture was an airplane with four people in it. And the teacher said, uh, you're supposed to tell a, a draw a picture about the Bible story. I don't think there was any airplanes in the old, I mean, way back in the old days. I don't think there were airplanes there. He said, what, those little boys said, well, that is Mary and Joseph and the baby and their flight to Egypt. She said, well, that's really good. Who's the fourth person there, though? You drew four. I understand, Mary, Joseph, and the baby. He said, well, that's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> Truths that transform, that is not a truth that will transform anything. That is just an old story about uh, kids and, and Christmas. Truths that transform. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of, of John chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 14, uh, 1 through 14. I'll get that right here in a moment. John chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. All things were created through Him, and apart from Him not one thing was created. That has been created, life was in Him, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in darkness, yet darkness has not overcome it. There was a man named John who was sent from God. He became a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world, and he was in the world. And the world was created through him, but the world did not recognize him. He came into his own. And his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those that believe in his name, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, the word became flesh, took up residence among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for these words from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. And I pray that these would be words of encouragement this morning as we look at Christmas. Thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift ever, Jesus Christ coming to this world, born of a virgin, born in a manger. But not only that, he lived and then died and rose again. And what a glorious story that is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you well know, the old saying, Jesus is the reason for this season. But as we come into this Christmas season, I want to teach you uh, what I learned in 
in high school English class. What I learned in high school English class was how to diagram sentences and what prepositions are. Do you know what prepositions are? Uh, some of you are saying, what in the world is this guy talking about? Why is prepositions having... I am going to build a sermon around prepositions. Okay, the prepositions are over, for, with, in, and through. That is my outline. You won't find it in your notes, and it's not going to come up on the screen. That's the only slide for the screen. We're going to do it old school today, and you're just going to have to pay attention. How's that? But uh, when I was in high school, the English teacher said, first off, Mark, your English is horrible. Do you know that English is my second language? My first language is bad English. Just to let you know. And uh, she said, whatever you could do to a mountain, you can go over the mountain, through the mountain, in the mountain, around the mountain. Those were all prepositions. Did you learn that too? And so we're going to learn prepositions. Because if you look at John chapter 1, the, one of the things that strikes me is the use of prepositions. He came to his own. He came for his own. All these prepositions, and we're going to see what they mean to us with the coming of Christ. First off, Christ's supremacy. He is over us. We see in the first uh, few verses that he came, and all the, this is the Christ, and all the worlds that were created were created by him. Now, some religions believe that Jesus was a son of God. Listen to those words, a son of God, but not the son of God. That Jesus was just a copy of God. That Jesus really isn't God. Because how could Jesus be God? Because God is one person, and Jesus is a second and then you throw in the Holy Spirit, and it messes them all up. But we believe in what? The Trinity. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're all the same. And they're all different. Folks, do not try to understand that. Accept it by faith. Now, people try to explain it and say, it's like a cherry pie. You got the crust, you got the top, and you got the filling. You may like cherry pie, but God is much bigger than a cherry pie. No, he's not. It's, it's like water. It's frozen, it's, it's solid, and it's vapor. God is much bigger than water. The Trinity is one of those things we just accept by faith. I remember a, a story being told about a seminary class, a doctrinal class, where the final exam was explain the Trinity. And the guys would write pages and pages and pages to explain the Trinity. And the only one that got an A was the guy who wrote... I don't know, turned in his page and walked out the door. Was the only one that got an A. Because none of us know. You may try to try to explain it, and I appreciate your efforts in trying, but Jesus is God. And the Bible says in Colossians and elsewhere that everything that was made was made by him. He is the creator of everything. He was there in Genesis chapter 1 when God said, let us make man after our image. Us and our, in our image. Jesus was there. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Yes, true. Born of Mary, born of a virgin. 
But do you understand Jesus was in existence long before that? Jesus has been around forever. And the Jesus we worship is not the baby in the manger, but the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the one that sits on the right hand of God. He is God. He created everything. He is over us. We see that in John chapter 1. Everything is created by him, through him, for him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Christ and Jesus are the same. All things, verse 3, came into being by him. Romans chapter 9, verse 5 says, Who's the fathers from whom Christ, according to the flesh, is over all? God bless forever. Amen. He is over all. The first preposition, God, Jesus, is over us. His supremacy. Colossians says, For by him all things were created, from the heavens to the earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, and in him things are hold together. The bottom is, bottom line is, we give our allegiance to Christ, who is God. He's over us. Number two, our second preposition, God, Jesus, is for us. He's for us. Not only is Jesus the King of kings and Lord of lords, but he is on our side. He's for us. Now, have you ever been to an amusement park with your kids? And um, back when I was younger and actually had kids at home, we, would, we went to uh, amusement parks and they used to take tickets. You remember the tickets? Do they still do that at all? I think most places are one fee and you just go in, right? Is that true? Uh, my, my grandbaby is only two, so I'm not really take her into amusement. So it's been a long time since my kids have been that age. But did you ever get in line and you give the tickets? And I've got three boys, and they all want to ride that roller coaster. And I didn't, but Dad would stand at the beginning of the line and I wouldn't give them their tickets because if the line was more than 30 seconds long, what happened to their tickets? They lost them. But they would line up and I would hand the ticket agent however many tickets they had to come. And you know what would happen? Two or three boys <coughs> would get in line with my kids and they would go through and think I was handing the tickets out for them too ever happened to you? And I'd say, no, these three are with me. Now, sometimes they brought a friend or two. So there's four or five that I was paying for. But no way did I have enough tickets in my pocket to pay for all the kids in the whole line. There's only some of them with me, right? Do you understand I know this analogy breaks down a little bit, but it's a great little story. When we get to heaven, if you want to put it this way, Jesus is at the ticket line, and Peter is at the gate, and Jesus says, hey, he's with me. He's with me. He's with me. I'm paying for him. I'm paying for him. Jesus is for us. Why did Jesus come to this earth? So we can have a holiday and go buy lots of presents, have a Christmas tree, have Santa Claus. He came to this earth to die for our sins. That's why he came. He's here for us, to give us salvation. He's here not to bring us a holiday or to break up the monotony of December. He is here because we need a Savior. 
I need a Savior. He is here for us. He is here to die for us, to take our place, to, to hang on a tree and die and three days later rise from the grave. Romans, Paul writes, if God gave his son for us, how will he not freely with him give us all things? Have you thought about that? If I gave you my son and said, look, I love my child, but I love you more. You can have his life to keep you alive. If you asked me to borrow $50 the next day, wouldn't I just give it to you? I've already proven my love, right? If I've given you my son, I pretty much have given you my most precious possession because that's all I have is me and my three sons and my wife. He that gave his son, how will he not freely give us all things? John says, he was the light that shone into the darkness. Christ is the light of the world. He came to bring us light in our darkness. The cross is that shining light. He, that, when he died for us and the Father turned his head and the sky turned black and Jesus died on that cross, he did it for me and he did it for you. An old song, well, I don't know how old it is. It's, when I was a teenager, that's pretty old. It goes something like this. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He is over us, but he's also for us. I'm thankful he's just not over us. I've got plenty of people over me. My wife is over me. I can say that because she's still with the grandbaby. She comes back tomorrow morning. But for me, how many people are really for me? You want another preposition? With. Christ is with us. With us. It says in verse number four that he is the word and the word is with us. The word is with us. You know the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel? You know that song? What does the word Emmanuel mean? God with us. Now, I am so glad he's for us, he's over us, but I am really glad he's with us. He lived this life. He walked these streets and he lived amongst us. He came into this world. John said, he came into his own and his own didn't receive him. But to as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. He is with us. Paul writes the Philippians chapter 2. It talks about the incarnation of Christ. God, who thought it was not robbery to, to come to this earth, Take on the form of man. Live amongst us. Die on the cross. God is man. What a mind-blowing thought. That God would become man and die for my sins? Really? Why? We're his creation. 
I've created a lot of things. And if I mess it up, guess what happens to that creation? I throw it away and start all over. Why didn't God do that with us? Because God is with us. He's with us. Next preposition, God is in us. Let me just give you the last one too. And through us. He's in us and through us. He said, I'm leaving you, but I'm not going to leave you without a counselor, without the Holy Spirit coming. And you know what? I have something that an Old Testament saint never had. I have something that until the resurrection and the ascension, John and Peter and those New Testament saints never had in that era. And that is, I have God living inside of me. He says to them, look, you've seen great miracles, but you're going to do greater things because he is going to come live inside you, the Holy Spirit. So guess what? I stand as a Christian, not in my own stead, in my own righteousness. I stand in Jesus' righteousness, but also God is in me, and God is in you. And you know when the life we live becomes a victorious life? You want to live a victorious life? Quit living in your own strength and power. Live through the power that is within you, the power of the Holy Spirit. God is in you, and he wants to work through you. If you allow him, listen to his voice. God wants to work through you. We can have great living nativity scenes, but unless we do it in the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit, he's not there. It's our own doing. We need God to work through us. Too many of us do the work of God in our own power, in our own strength. Allow God who is in you to work through you. Christmas, it's a uh, Sometimes misunderstood in our culture today, we get wrapped up in so many busy things, we forget that it's all about Jesus. I'm sorry if I brought back nightmares for you when I talked about English, high school English. But John tells us the importance of God being over us for us, with us, in us, through us. Jesus truly is the reason for the season, the reason we're here. Years ago, I read a, a story in, a, I think it was the New York Times or uh, something in New York. It was a, about a socialite who um, had just had a baby, and she was having... A party to celebrate the birth of that baby people were like a like a shower and people were coming to her house to to have a party bring presents you know all that kind of stuff you, you've been to those right I try to stay away from those but my wife goes all the time okay us guys tend to say oh honey sorry I've got to work on the car or something that night you go ahead and go the guests had arrived. The, the young lady had worked all day to get the house ready, get the food prepared, make sure everything was nice and neat. And right before the people started to arrive, she took her little newborn baby, she laid it in the middle of the bed, kind of made sure it was safe there, you know, with the pillows and such on the ends. And she went out and began to 
welcome her guests as they came in. Most of them, of course, in New York, it was wintertime, came in with coats and jackets and gloves and boots and everything else. She would grab all those things and pitch them away, and they began to eat and drink and have fun. And finally, one of the other ladies said, where's your baby? We came to see the baby. And a panic look came upon her face. She had been taking all those coats and jackets and hats and stuff and throwing them on her bed. And she quickly ran into the bed and found the little baby had died because of lack of oxygen for being covered with coats. It was in the newspaper how sad that was. And it is sad. But as we come to the time of the birth of Christ, we remember that? I sometimes think that Jesus gets covered with our coats and our presence. And he gets smothered to death, too. Because, yeah, I, I'm all for family. I mean, I just spent the last three days with my grandkids, saw my little grandbaby walk forward. She was an angel in her Christmas program. Got a video of it. If you want to see it, it's on my iPad. I'll show it to you after church, how cute she is. We can get caught up in all that, but the truth that will transform us is don't hide the baby under the coats, under the presence, under Santa Claus, under anything else. The truth that transforms is Jesus is the reason for the season. He's for us, over us, with us, through us, in us. All those propositions. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus Christ and what he means to us. He is God. He is man. He is the God-man. And I pray these truths of the gospel message will transform our lives. Lord, it is so easy to be overcome with all the obligations. Christmas parties, presents, family, friends, shopping, stress of Christmas. Help us to take time out, especially during this time, and spend time thinking about you. And work in us, through us. May others tonight, through this living nativity, see Jesus, the reason for this season. Help us to be your good witnesses in this world. I pray these things in Jesus' name.